Hey, what's up guys? My name is Odolf and welcome to the third and final part of my particles tutorial. So for this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the lifetime control panels and forces. So I already pre-made something right here and you can download the project file if you want to follow along. Just go to my website, readypolice.com and go to project files and just download the particles part three. So yeah, from now on, I'll probably be posting project files for a lot of my tutorials. So I just name it the name the project file, the name of the episode, and then you can just go to project file and download it. So so yeah, and right here you see we pretty much have a nice little animation going on, just spinning around. And and by now you guys should know how to do this if you've been following my previous tutorials. So pretty much this just spiral in. And then it goes and passes right by the camera. So we're going to be talking about the lifetime control panels and where to find the lifetime control panels. Is keep going down. It gets a little tricky. And then you have lifetime right here. And then, yeah. So that's the lifetime control panel. And so pretty much what this does is if I go to movement right here, and then you see that I have the life set to two seconds. It's pretty much the particles that are coming out. That's pretty much the first second and that's the last second. All of them are lasting ten, um, two seconds. And also you see that I have the speed to zero. Remember that the speed would pretty much make everything fly out. But since I want a nice trail effect, I have it at zero. So yeah, pretty much what the lifetime panel does is you can change the particles based on the lifetime. So right here you see it says birth and death. So if I wanted to keyframe something and I want all the particles to look a certain way at their birth, birth, I could make it and then change it to their death. So pretty much, let me make a, let me make a quick demonstration. Let me go to alpha right here. And you see it has a lot of different controls you can affect. So let's go to alpha right here and everyone will know that alpha is very much controlling the transparency and let's change the type to off to gradient and pretty much what this allows us to do is let me drag this right here if it's white that means it's not transparent and if you turn it to black then that means it's fully transparent and i can add another keyframe by just clicking right here and dragging this here so pretty much let, let's say at birth I want the particles to not be transparent at all, but at death, I want them to be fully transparent. So I can just click right here and just do this, put it to black. And as you see now, now when this is playing, pretty much as it goes, you see it just kind of fades in and you see a nice like snake tail looking thing. So that's what you can do with that. And right here you have the loop numbers. So right now it's just one loop. But if let's say we wanted this to happen twice or so many times, like you just say like it'll start, that's one loop, transparent, and then it starts again, and then it starts again. So that's some pretty different stuff you can do with it. Let's just put this at one. So yeah, I hope you're starting to get this. And of course, if I move this closer, then you'll see it gets transparent a lot faster. So, that, so that's pretty much what the lifetime panel does is based on the lifetime on your particles, whether it's two seconds, whether it's 10 seconds, you can just calculate the percentage of whatever you want it to do and then it'll do it. So let's take another example. Let me go to color right here. And again, it's off. Let's put to gradient. And let's move this right here and you can click right here to add another keyframe. And let me move it here. So let's say for the end near the death, if I want to put that color to yellow, and then at the beginning, if I want the color to be red, so right here you'll just see that it starts out red and then the particles just gradually become yellow. And you can do a lot of cool things with that. So for example, if I go to scale, you see the scale it looks a little bit different than the color and the alpha, but it's pretty much the same thing. You have some presets right here pre-built for you. Let's go to this one, which just gives us two points at 100%. And 
And pretty much what this 100% means is pretty much if we go back to movement, it's 100% of 37% scale. So if we had a bigger scale, while still being 100%, it'll, still, it, it'll get bigger pretty much. So let's say we want at the start to be small and then at, at the end to get bigger. For example, we could click right here and instead of 100%, let's, let's put it at like, yeah, 16% is fine. Then you can click on the end keyframe and let's say I want it to be 300% of 35, well, of 61%. Then it'll be like this. And when we play the animation, you'll see that they start out very small, but as this go, they get a lot bigger. So. So I can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Let's just go back like this and let's just leave it. Now let's go to the speed and let's choose this. But watch this. If I move this, nothing happens. Nothing happens. I could add as many keyframes as I want and nothing is going to happen. And that's because if I go back here, you see the speed is zero. So zero, I mean, you, you could times zero by how many number you want, it'll still be zero. So let's go back to the lifetime panel. Let's just put that back to two points of a hundred percent. And let's say we just want the speed to be, yeah, let me put it at 10. So you'll see that the stuff on that stick key to each other as they used to be. And let's say we want to modify the speed. So let's say we want the speed at first is start at 10%, but at the end, we want it to get the speed to get really high as it goes. And then you will see that it's giving you a nice fairy dust, magic looking effect. And that's pretty cool looking. So yeah, and of course, if we want the speed to be more, we have to do is just come back here. We can make the speed bigger and then. So pretty cool stuff. And of course, you can also add different keyframes to your thing. So I can just click right here. And let's do this. And I can drag it. And what that's gonna do pretty much is pretty much a wide percentage of the lifetime will be at regular speed and then near the end it'll just start going fast. So if we do this, you'll just see that near the end it just starts like the speed start going crazy. Let me do a way to illustrate that more. Let me just put the to zero, you can click right here, put it to zero. And then, so now pretty much you will see that near the end, the speed starts going more. And let me actually make more space. So yeah, you can just see that near the end, the speed start going pretty much. So, so yeah, that's the basic of the lifetime panel. You pretty much have every option available, the acceleration, remember what we talked about the acceleration way back. You have the center of mass, color, rotation, rotation per second, texture, angle. So yeah, whatever the lifetime of your thing is, just work, work around with, work with it, and pick different points to fit the percentage of what you're looking for. And, and that, that really helps you get some pretty convincing effects. So, so that's it for the lifetime panel. And that's how thing is looking so far. Then it goes by the camera and the speed, okay. So now let, let's go to forces. Now forces, if you go right here and try to get it, it won't work because you haven't added a force yet. So let's just go right here and add a force. And immediately after adding the force, you see that it's going down because that's the that's the direction the force is going. It's just pu pu pulling it down pretty much. And if you open the force right here, you can see general whether you want it active or not. See if it's not active, then it's not pulling down, but it's active. So, and the shape, it can be either global or cuboid, which is pretty much a cube. So for global, it's just everything is just being affected. But let's say I just wanted certain parts of the animation to be affected. Let's say, for whatever example you, I can't think of an example right now. So if we change it to cuboid, we can go to shape, click right here so we can actually see the cube. And let's up the cube a little bit and let's scale it up. 
So pretty much what this is doing is every time the partic every particle that passes in the middle of that cube, that cube is 3D. So if we go to two views, you'll see the front view, the top view, you still see the cube. So every particle that passes through that cube will be affected by the force. So you'll see as soon as they pass in the cube, they start going down because that's what the force was going. And then as soon as it exits it, you see it goes back to normal. So, so yeah, that's always helpful to for, for whatever effect you want to do. Let's go back to that view. And of course, let's go back to global. I want everything to be affected. And of course, you can change the strength of it. If I want it really down, then pretty much everything is just going down right here. And if it has really low strength, then, then you barely notice it. Let's just keep the strength right here. And of course, you can change the orientation for it. Like for this, you just see like it's moving on the, I would say that's the Y axis. I could be wrong. So this would just kind of be coming and then it, it feel like it's blowing through to the camera. Like the wind is blowing through the camera. And we can mess around with them. We can even put two together and, and, and get different effects. So, so that's what forces do. It's kind of like acceleration, but not really. And, and yeah, it's pretty helpful way if you have wind in your footage or, or for whatever effect you're doing. Play around with it and try to understand it and you'll do some pretty cool stuff. So, so yeah, that's it for the lifetime control panel and the forces. And we still have some time, so let me just go ahead and try to make this a better effect. Let me go back to emitter. Let's say I wanted to do like a fairy dust type thing. And let me go to forces and deactivate it. Yeah, let's say I wanted to do a fairy dust type thing. So first we'll have to go to appearance. And let's change this to add so it can be like shiny. So I can try different things with it. If I don't want it to get transparent as it goes, I could turn that off and you will see the whole effect right here. But then it would start, see like when it's erasing, it's just too abrupt. So I could still go here and just add a, a slight keyframe so it just fades out. So right here you see we just have like a nice fairy dust, magical, whatever you're doing effect. So so just play around with it and you, you'll, you'll come up with some pretty cool stuff. So, so yeah, thanks for watching this tutorial and remember I'll be posting some cool presets on my website readypolis.com and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can just keep updated with cool new stuff that's coming. So, so thanks for watching and have a nice day.